Welcome. For those of you that are unfamiliar with Pirate Christian Radio and or uh, Fighting for the Faith, uh, Pirate Christian Radio is a radio ministry operated by Chris Rosebro. Fighting for the Faith is their flagship production under that headline. Uh, in either event, Chris Rosebro is the founder and effective leader of both of them. Pirate Christian Radio or Pirate Christian Media, I think, features other people and other podcasts as well. Uh, but Chris Rosebro has been doing Fighting for the Faith for approximately the last 10 years or so. Given that Chris Rosebro is good friends with J.D. Hall, Phil Johnson, Todd Friel, and co., uh, it should come as no surprise that uh, this is long overdue, given that I have uh, endeavored to expose the hypocritical stances of the aforementioned. Chris Rosebro is no different. Oh, we're just finally getting around to him. Uh, in order to set the stage, uh, this uh, the the interviews that are being pulled from here uh, primarily is uh, a dialogue between Chris Rosebro and Phil Johnson regarding Michael Brown and his illicit affiliation with New Apostolic Reformation, which is a very valid critique. I actually agree with. You'll see that the problem is their inconsistent application of biblical principles, their unbalanced weights and measures. So. Um, Let's begin with this comment from Phil Johnson. Rodney Howard Brown actually had someone threaten me with a lawsuit because I took one of his videos and made some annotations on it and put it online. They wanted it taken off. Mm, yeah, I, I wonder why. Yeah, I wonder why too. But just in case anybody gets any bright ideas, let's let it be known that Phil Johnson and Chris Roseboro were both perturbed at the fa fact that Rodney Howard Brown filed a lawsuit against Phil Johnson. Any uh, video and or audio sampling I use here is used under the Fair Use Act and is done for the purposes of critique, commentary, and or education. So now that we've got that out of the way, perhaps we can continue. Hi, Phil Johnson. How are you today? <laughs> I'm good. I'm good. I'm really good. I'm glad to talk to you about this. The Apostle of Obfuscation. That's a good title. Justin Peters calls him the uh, Sergeant Schultz of the Charismatic Movement. I, I know nothing! I see nothing! <laughs> yeah. So they're, they're laughing about Michael Brown being the Apostle of Obfuscation. Uh, because Michael Brown, when questioned about his affiliation with the New Apostolic Reformation, uh, pulls the ignorance card and claims he doesn't know what anybody's talking about. And now they're quite right to critique Michael Brown and his involvement with uh, Mike Bickle and, and company. Um, they're a bunch of heretical, proven Deuteronomy 18, proven false prophets. Uh, I mean, by literal biblical definition, these men are false prophets. And uh, Michael Brown is speaking at their conferences. He spoke at the One Thing Conference, uh, which Francis Chan was also at. Uh, that's led by Mike Bickle and the um, IHOP crew. They're very closely tied to Bethel Church in Redding, California. So all of this is very valid, very valid critique. Um, the, the problem here uh, begins back in October when I reached out to Chris Rosebro and asked him about John MacArthur's partnership with people like uh, David Platt, Matt Chandler, Mark Dever, and John Piper, to name a few. And um, Chris Rosebro's first response, right? So we're going to go back and forth here. You know, they're, they're laughing that Michael Brown claims he knows nothing. He knows nothing. I don't know anything. I know nothing about the NAR. When I asked Chris Rosebro about John MacArthur's partnerships, a man that he is at the very least indirectly close to, as Phil Johnson is John MacArthur's right-hand man, and him and Chris Rosebro are very good friends, Chris Rosebro's response to my question was, if you think Piper or MacArthur need to do some separating, then take it up with them. I am not in contact with either of them. So begins the obfuscation of the duplicitous Mr. Rosebro. He has a lot in common with his good friend J.D. Hall, who's been thoroughly exposed already on this channel. And if you'd like to see that video, go look for uh, 
J.D. Hall versus J.D. Hall. These men have uh, the uncanny ability to contradict themselves and undermine themselves at every turn and do it in, in, in baffling confidence. So Chris Rosebro says, take it up with them. I'm not in contact with them. I don't know what you're talking about. I don't want to know what you're talking about. Let's continue. It's interesting that from some critics in circles, I'm getting a lot of flack for speaking at that because of alleged association with the, the NAR. And he said, what's that? Yeah, I, I would be concerned about your speaking at it uh, in order to lend credibility to the false revival of the Toronto Airport Church. So Chris Rosebro makes a very valid critique. He's concerned that Michael Brown would be lending credibility to them. How is he doing that? By participating with them, by involving himself at their conference. Uh, this is the basis of, of Chris Rosebro's concern, and justifiably so. You are lending credibility and extending the right hand of fellowship to people that you ought rather be rebuking. So Chris Rosebro is rightly concerned. But when I ask him and, uh, about John MacArthur's affiliations and partnerships at various conferences multiple times a year with guys like John Piper, Chris Rosebro says here in this Twitter exchange, 2 John 9 through 13 does not require J. Mac to decline speaking at Together for the Gospel. For those that don't know, Together for the Gospel hosts uh, many of the uh, the men that I, I just listed a moment ago, Matt Chandler, David Platt, John Piper, Mark Dever, etc. I said, if three men there openly support Rick Warren, Beth Moore, Francis Chan, Carl Lentz, etc., do you not see something wrong with that? Chris's response, no, I don't. Conference does not equal church fellowship. I said, substantiate this. Is it okay to speak with the Pope at a conference while I pray with him, yes or no? I continued to ask that question to Chris approximately seven times with zero answer. He wouldn't answer the question because he couldn't answer the question because the standard he implements is a, an absurd one and one that cannot be uh, applied consistently. If it were, he would have to answer this question a different way. Clearly, it's not okay to speak with the Pope and pray with the Pope, but if Chris said that, he would be undermining his previous statement. So Chris says, I don't see anything wrong with conferences. That's not a church fellowship. Well, just a second ago, he said he sees something very wrong with Michael Brown lending credibility to someone. These conferences didn't take place at Michael Brown's church. To my knowledge, Michael Brown uh, isn't a pastor, for one, and doesn't... Um, Regardless of Michael Brown's affiliation, these conferences happened elsewhere. They happened, uh, in fact, in the home of IHOP, at IHOP's church, not Michael Brown's. So already we see Chris Rosebro's double standard. Let's continue. I mean, he literally lumps everybody who's critiquing the NAR into, like, the wingnut conspiracy theorists, you know, who are practically Holocaust deniers and who think that 9-11 was an inside government job, and um, that which is like not even helpful <laughs> it's the best, yeah. best way i can put it because you know i don't consider you to be one of those prone to conspiracy theory types no but michael brown does so uh when michael brown was critiqued by these guys and legitimately so um apparently michael brown uh said that they were conspiracy theorists they were on so some sort of witch hunt etc and they mock this they mock this and when I brought up the same concern applied to somebody in Chris Rosebro's camp, his response was, Using this bizarre logic, Phil Johnson is now also guilty of Moore's heresies because he hasn't separated from J-Mac either. So already begins the mocking from Chris Rosebro. He then says, you are aware that Phil Johnson and I have spoken at several conferences together. That makes Phil a promoter of Lutheranism, right? So you can see the uh, the inherent uh, mocking and condescending tone coming from Phil Johnson. Now, while he didn't call me a conspiracy theorist, he certainly uh, took time to to make use of creative emojis, saying, "Oh, what, what a what a terrible thing that that would be." 
Um, he's very much mocking this in the same manner that Michael Brown mocked them. Let's continue. He will come to the defense of uh, whatever charismatic issue is being critiqued. And yeah. sometimes he'll pretend to be himself uh, a discernment expert and a critic of charismatic extremism. But he, he always has this tendency to whatever he gives you with his left hand, he takes back with his right. Right. He seems to speak out of both sides of his mouth. Well, it seems like Michael Brown's in good company, isn't it, Mr. Uh, doesn't he, Mr. Rose Brown? Uh, because Chris speaks out of both sides of his mouth, as does his friend and um, ministry, Phil Johnson. They implement a different standard depending on who you're talking about. You cannot get consistency from these men uh, because it would jeopardize their own platforms. If they were to consistently apply this critique to people they should, like John MacArthur joining hands with people that promote, um, for example, David Platt and Francis Chan uh, are very good friends. They promote each other often. Francis Chan was at the exact same conference with Michael Brown at the One Thing conference in 2013, I believe. He's an NAR affiliate every bit as much as Michael Brown is, and even more so because twice on record, Francis Chan said, I love Mike Bickle. I love this guy. Even though people warned me not to come, I love him. They said he was creepy. I love his heart. I love what he's doing. Proven false prophet Mike Bickle. That's who Francis Chan loves. David P Platt openly promotes him. Uh, John MacArthur's on stage. I mean, sorry, John Piper on stage with the same Francis Chan doing Lectio Divina with him and Beth Moore at Passion 2012, which I believe was even covered by Chris Rosebro. Isn't that something? But Chris says, out of the other side of his mouth, Phil Johnson, I think you should explain to Phil Johnson how he's guilty of promoting Beth Moore because John MacArthur is speaking with Piper at Together for the Gospel. He continues his mocking trend. See, it's okay for Michael Brown to, uh, for John MacArthur to partner with whoever. But when Michael Brown partners with somebody that they don't like, they get upset. Why is that? Well, there's one difference um, that they, they tend to, to focus in on because John Piper holds very similar beliefs to Michael Brown. The big difference is Michael Brown is not a Calvinist, and John Piper is. And in, in just a little bit, you're going to see Phil Johnson extending an extra measure of grace to John Piper, almost crowning him with a special pass because he's of the f Reformed ilk. That's it. Reformed theology, even though he's not a cessationist, even at the Strange Fire Conference in 2013, when John Piper's name was brought up, not in relation to endorsing false teachers, by the way, but in relation to being charismatic, John MacArthur said, well, he's an anomaly. He's an anomaly. So as long as you're a Calvinist, go ahead. Go ahead and, and do whatever you want. That's part of it. Now, uh, now let's continue with uh, Phil and Chris. And in the midst of it, he doesn't give a biblical argument. His argument is argument ad experientium. You know, it's a it, total argument from experience. This has to be the, the working of God because, you know, I was there and I saw it. And those people are not there and, and they haven't seen it. And so, therefore, my experience trumps your biblical critique. And he always seems to avoid having any kind of a substantive argument or discussion right. centered around biblical texts. Yeah, a couple of things about that. He was not only there, he engineered a lot of what was going on in Pensacola, and therefore he defends it. So Michael Brown was not only there, but because he was behind the scenes in some sense, he therefore defends it. Well, John MacArthur's been behind the scenes of Together for the Gospel for the last 12 years, over a decade, supporting Mark Dever, Al Mohler, David Platt, John Piper, all of them for over a decade. So therefore he defends them. Very clear, using Phil Johnson's logic that Chris Rosebro readily agrees with. But notice they say that he's, he's not capable or doesn't desire to argue biblically. He argues experientially. Well, I'm wondering if uh, Michael Brown took a page out of Chris Rosebro's book or if Chris Rosebro took a page out of Michael Brown's book. It's really hard to tell. Uh, here's what Chris Rosebro has to say. What's next? When I quote 
uh, Second John 9 through 11 and give Matthew Henry's commentary on it. <clears throat> he says, what's next? <clears throat> Excuse me. Demonstrating that John MacArthur is guilty of teaching dancing is a sin because of the six degrees of separation from Kevin Bacon. So he can't argue biblically, so he uses an absurd um, argumentum ad absurdum, right, to, uh, to, to take this to the most ridiculous place possible. Interestingly enough, Todd Friel stole this argument directly from Chris Rosebro and J.D. Hall stole the same thing. They said almost verbatim exactly what Chris Rosebro said here in Todd Friel's uh, podcast with Phil Johnson. Again, they're all very close friends. Todd Friel said, hey, Phil, you know how I know that you're uh, that you're uh, uh, guilty of promoting uh, dancing, that you think dancing is a sin because you know somebody that knows somebody that knows somebody that watched Footloose with Kevin Bacon, right? So Todd Friel happily used this bizarre and asinine analogy um, that was straight from the mouth of Chris Rosebro. They're not capable of arguing biblically, so they argue in some other way. Right? They try to use a, a half-baked attempt at humor um, or, or some sort of uh, undermining of reality to, to make a point that's not there. So apparently, Michael Brown and Chris Rosebro have quite a bit in common, but let's continue. Right, exactly. And not only that, it's not credible to say that John Arnott and Bill Johnson are not a part of it. And, you know, it, it the, the question comes up, how are we to interpret John Arnott and Bill Johnson's participation in the apostolic alignment ceremony of Todd Bentley at the Lakeland Revival? So Chris Rosebro is rightly taking issue with the fact that these men are participating in a ceremony at Lakeland, Lakeland Revival, despite any denials, there we're not affiliated with the New Apostolic Reformation. Chris Rosebro correctly asserts your participation betrays that you were. How could you possibly be taking part in this ceremony at Lakeland and say you're not a part of it? Well, let's apply that same standard consistently, Mr. Rosebro, to John MacArthur and company. How could you possibly say he's not uh, agree in agreement with these other men when he's participating with them? John MacArthur slated to speak at the Gospel Coalition Conference this October. He spoke with John Piper and, and Trip Lee and a whole host of other pff, laughably pathetic heretic embracers at Together for the Gospel in April. And he's going to speak at the Sing Conference with C Keith and Kristen Getty. In September, guess who's going to be there? Timothy Keller, founder of the Gospel Coalition. John Piper, promoter of Rick Warren and Carl Lentz. Uh, who else is going to be there? Trip Lee, the Hillsong and Jesus Culture loving fool. That's who John MacArthur is going to be speaking with and participating with. So Chris Rosebro rightly says, how could you say you're not in agreement with these people? How could you say you're not an NAR affiliate when you're participating in these things with them? Very correct assessment. Let's apply it consistently. John MacArthur's doing the same thing. It's about time we balance and even out our scales, isn't it, Mr. Rosebro? Let's continue. And um, and so what I find fascinating here is already, already Michael Brown's rhetoric is designed not to have an honest conversation with actual facts regarding yeah. who is involved in the NAR. Um, yeah, yeah. Michael Brown doesn't want to have a conversation about actual facts, and neither does Chris Rosebro. So again, Chris Rosebro says, if speaking at a conference with Piper makes J Mac guilty of Moore's false teaching, then you speaking with me on Twitter makes you a Lutheran. He wants to sidestep the facts at every turn and make light of it and pretend like it's just a complete irrationality. No. I'm saying exactly what you're saying, Mr. Rosebro. I'm only applying it to people that will affect your income effectively. All right? This isn't good for business. Mr. Rosebro has self-interest in heart here and in mind, and self-preservation apparently wins out over truth. Fighting for the faith? I think not. Chris Rosebro is fighting for Chris Rosebro. Um, let's look at another quote from Chris Rosebro here. He says, FYI. 
I do not endorse Piper. His theology is tainted by his belief that he hears from God directly. So now Chris admits that he thinks John Piper's theology is tainted. Yet, he has no problem with John MacArthur speaking with him. He says a conference isn't church fellowship, so who cares? Yet he admits here, John Piper has tainted theology. Have you ever heard Chris Rosebro critique John MacArthur for his partnership with John Piper over the years? His participation with him in conferences such as Together for the Gospel and twice this year at Sing uh, 2018? No? Why, why is that? Well, self-preservation is exactly why. But let's continue. Let me just comment before we get too far away from it. And, and first one's just a minor annoyance, but it goes, I've heard this tape that you're playing and it goes all the way through it. It annoys me the way he pronounces apostolic as if the word started with the letter O. It's apostolic. I don't know why he does that, but whatever. Uh, so, so Phil Johnson takes issue with the way Michael Brown pronounces apostolic because he says apostolic. This is the substance offered by Phil Johnson and Chris Rosebro, a couple of tag-teaming court jesters. Well, it just annoys me. What a pretentious and, and moronic thing to say, Phil Johnson. It just annoys and Chris Rosebro uh, gleefully laughs behind him. It annoys me the way he pronounces apos apostolic as if it started with an O. Well, check this out. Uh, it's it's just it's utterly tragic and they are literally chasing their tails and they're not actually substantively being discipled uh no chris they're figuratively chasing their tails unless you're talking about animals so phil johnson critiques michael brown's pronunciation of words but chris rosebro doesn't even know the definition of literally he says they're literally chasing their tails well, if we were to put pronunciation and meaning in the scales, meaning has a bit more weight than pronunciation does. At least Michael Brown knows what the definition of apostolic means. Chris Rosebro doesn't even know how to use the word literally in a sentence. So if we're going to critique speech here, let us uh, I'll, I'll be the grammar police for you. You guys are pathetic and inconsistent hypocrites. Let's continue. He says things that simply are not credible, mm -hmm. and then he gets offended if you suggest he's not being truthful. Yeah. It, it, you know, on the one hand, he puts himself forward as the great expert on the charismatic movement. He tells critics like me, you, you can't criticize this movement, you don't know it like I do. Mm -hmm. Then when specific things are mentioned, like the NAR, he'll, he'll invariably say, I, I've never heard of this. Yeah, again, it, it looks to me that uh, Phil Johnson and Chris Rosebro have just taken action pages right out of Michael Brown's playbook, or vice versa. Who's to know? Who's stealing from who here? You guys are doing the same thing. They get offended when somebody uh, critiques them, even though they've put themselves up in this place of discernment, right? The big bad discerners fighting for the faith, pirate Christian radio, all about discernment. Here's Chris Rosebro's response. The people you need to contact that are up uh, to take that up with are Piper and MacArthur. Again, I don't have any contact with either of them. So just like Michael Brown tries to pretend like he doesn't know what's going on, Chris Rosebro says, I don't have any contact with them. Take it up with them. Yet Chris Rosebro is happy to critique everyone under the sun that he has zero contact with whatsoever only he does it selectively. So are we to, are we to believe that uh, Chris Rosebro has contact with Stephen Furtick? Are we to believe that Chris Rosebro has contact with uh, Todd White? Are we to believe that Chris Rosebro has contact with Cindy Jacobs? Are we to believe that Chris Rosebro has contact with any of the dozens of people that he critiques on a regular basis? I'll let you ask that question to yourself. My inclination is it's an utter absurdity to even give another breath of thought to. Chris Rosebro is quite simply a hypocrite. Now he doesn't know what's going on. I don't know. Take it up with them. And then he says, I don't know how to make this any clearer. If you think Piper and MacArthur should separate from more then talk to Piper and MacArthur. My goodness, if uh, Michael Brown is washing his hands 
and Pilate's washing his hands, then Chris Rosebro, doubly so. He just doesn't know how to make it any clearer. I don't know how to tell you. I don't know. I don't know what's going on here. I don't want to know. Chris Rosebro knows exactly what's going on, but let's continue. When voices like you and me began um, on my blog and on your on your uh, broadcast began to critique the movement, suddenly everybody said, well, this is not a movement. We're not part of the same thing. I'm not saying oh, yeah. what he's saying. He's not saying what I'm saying. And the whole thing kind of fell apart when the emerging church movement began to realize, the people in it began to realize that uh, this was being examined critically, and this happened around 2004, 2005, yep. they started using exactly the same kind of argument that uh, Michael Brown is using with regard to the NAR. You know, I'm not sure what this is, we're not a movement, there's no leadership here. Right. And in a sense, all those things are true. With Peter Wagner gone, I'm not sure this is a cohesive movement, but there clearly are people who were tied in with Wagner, who shared some of the same goals, some of the same ideas. Yes, they didn't all agree on everything, but just like the emerging church people, it's true, they didn't all agree on everything. Yep. Their movement was this... Uh, channel through which all these bad ideas were percolating and and when people began to critique the bad ideas their defense was oh you know you can't you can't lump us all together we're not all the same and that's really exactly the same argument the same kind of argument that michael brown is using here yeah no i i completely agree well incidentally i completely agree it's a very relevant observation it's an incisive observation there's no, the amorphous nature of the New Apostolic Reformation and the hyper-charismatic extremism movement uh, isn't so clearly defined. Well, who's the leader of the movement? Nobody really knows. It's an easy way to shift blame and deflect from any responsibility. Well, you can't blame me for what he believes because we don't all believe the same thing. Well, the very same thing applies to Together for the Gospel, the Gospel Coalition, and all of John MacArthur's various partnerships. It is this channel, like Phil Johnson said, that bad ideas are able to percolate through. It's a, it's a channel for bad ideas. So you've got John Piper, the Rick Warren promoter, standing side by side with John MacArthur at Together for the Gospel. You got Matt Chandler, who's recently been critiqued by Chris Rosebro himself and the Hardy Boys at Pulpit and Pen for uh, you know, claiming to be a prophet and uh, having his uh, prophecies on TBN and, and some such and being overly charismatic. Well, John MacArthur's with him. Oh, well, we don't all believe the same thing. It's exactly the same argument. So their critique of the New Apostolic Reformation and that movement, while a valid one, is an inconsistent one because they are reluctant to apply it to their own sphere of influence. And why? Because... Most of these men view their ministries as just that. It's theirs. It's not the Lord's ministry. It's not the Lord's work that they're doing. God forbid they should be removed from the spotlight. That's what it's all about, isn't it? So, as, a, as an old author once said, when silence replaces truth, that silence is a lie. Chris Rosebro is a liar. Phil Johnson is a liar. They're inconsistent, unbalanced weights and measures, their hypocrisy for all to see. Let me remind you, Chris Rosebro's statement over here, they just critique this amorphous nature of the NAR. I say, if three men are with John MacArthur that openly support Rick Warren, Beth Moore, Francis Chan, Carl Lentz, etc., those three men I'm talking about would be John Piper, Matt Chandler, and David Platt, I say, do you not see something wrong with that? He says, no, I don't. Conference does not equal fellowship. Which one is it, Chris? You do see a problem with affiliations or you don't? You do think you're endorsing someone when you participate with them or you don't? You see, Chris Rosebro only uh, knows what he believes when you're talking about somebody that he doesn't like or that doesn't impact his own personal world. But if he should speak a foul word against John MacArthur, you better believe there would be repercussions and his ministry might suffer. Let's continue. And uh, they would really bristle at you trying to pin them down on what they believed 
or what they were asserting because they were always trying to be whimsical in their assertions so that yeah. they, they can and say well i wasn't really uh, asserting that we were just having a conversation and and it's this was a thought pr uh, question or you know it was a bizarre. Right. it was classically postmodern in that truth was fluid it was a matter of personal perspective you couldn't attribute to one member of the movement what the other member said, or you couldn't blame him for it or, or critique that idea because they don't all share it. So any critique is off limits. So now when I try to critique uh, John uh, MacArthur for statements from John Piper or statements from Matt Chandler or statements from David Platt, they just say, well, they don't all believe the same thing. You know, they're trying to unite on what they do believe. You can't blame MacArthur for what John Piper does. Really? But they're critiquing Michael Brown and, and the whole NAR movement as, as an entirety for that very thing. Hypocrites. Inconsistent hypocrites. Don't blame me for what he said. I don't know. We don't all believe the same thing. You're saying they shouldn't do that. When I say, here's what John MacArthur's um, moral corrupting friends are doing, they say, who cares? A conference isn't a church fellowship. That's Chris Rosebro's contention. Let's continue. Again, Chris Rosebro says, the people you need to take that up with, Piper and MacArthur, I have, I don't have any contact with either of them. Or the, the natural thing that happened with uh, the Arnots and Cheon and others being, uh, you know, kind of booted out of the vineyard movement and and their desire to not create a denomination and so instead what ended up happening is is that they've created these loose network this loose network of kind of like like-minded people as far as uh, in general ecclesiology as it relates to the restoration of apostles and prophets and hearing directly from God and strategies and things like this but there's no there's no headquarters to this thing and yeah. and you don't have to sign a doctrinal statement in order to be a part of it. They just all kind of loosely recognize that God's working in your ministry. If you recognize that God's working in mine, and um and and from there it's kind of like anything goes. I mean, and, and, and literally anything does go because there is an unspoken agreement amongst them, and you see this. I think perhaps most vividly displayed in Michael Brown himself. There's sort of an unspoken agreement in those circles that we don't critique one another, we don't challenge one another. And so if if Bill Johnson's wife is grave-sucking and he denies there's anything, you know, they all sort of cover for each other. Yeah. And so nothing ever actually gets pinned down and, and critiqued biblically, and so in the end, everything goes. <laughs> yeah, it, it's, it's exactly right. So all Bill Johnson has to do is say, I don't know what the NAR is, and so that means he's not a part of it. But what about his participation at the Apostolic Alignment Ceremony for Todd Bentley uh, with C. Peter Wagner as the MC? You know, if, if that's not NAR, I don't know what is. Wow. Another set of relevant and incisive observations that I agree with. Phil Johnson hit the nail on the head. There's an unspoken loyalty among them. An unspoken loyalty. Chris Rosebro uh, tied it up. Well, we'll bless your ministry as long as you bless ours. And as long as we have a generally uh, similar idea of ecclesiology, etc., we're all in agreement, but there's no headquarters, there's no leadership. This is exactly what's happening in the MacArthur camp, in the Reformed camp. There's an unspoken loyalty that they will not critique each other. Uh, John MacArthur has at his, uh, at his Shepherds Conference, he had Al Mohler, H.B. Charles, uh, Legan Duncan, and there's a fourth one I'm, I'm forgetting at the moment. But four, four speakers at his Shepherds Conference are members of the Gospel Coalition. The, the Marxist social justice agenda-pushing gospel coalition founded by Timothy Keller, who says that homosexuality is just not God's best for your life. This is who John MacArthur partners with, and why? Well, they're generally of the Reformed camp. They generally hold to the doctrines of grace. They're in general agreement about a lot of things, and they all adore uh, and borderline idolize John MacArthur. Um, so what they're critiquing, again, is exactly what's happening in their own movement. 
And and Chris uh, Chris Rosebro says again, what about his participation? What about Bill Johnson's participation in these ceremonies? Valid point, Chris. What about John MacArthur's participation in Together for the Gospel? Chris's response, that's not a church fellowship. Chris, you're a hypocrite. You're either ignorant, a legitimate ignoramus, or you're a raging hypocrite. Take your pick. Either way, you're disqualified from ministry. If you don't have control over your faculties, you shouldn't be teaching anybody. And if you're a liar, you shouldn't be teaching anybody. Either way, you shouldn't be teaching anybody. Looking pretty bleak for pirate Christian radio. You got one patch over your spiritual eye there, don't you, Chris? Let's continue. He says in this tweet, You are aware that Phil Johnson and I have spoken at several conferences together. That makes Phil a promoter of Lutheranism, right? Well, if that's your contention, Chris, his rhetorical question here is is that, no, clearly it doesn't make Phil a promoter of Lutheranism. But what he's critiquing the NAR for is exactly that. He's saying, you know what? Despite your your words, your participation there makes you a promoter of them. And now Chris wants to mock the idea that, uh, that uh, linking hands with somebody makes you a promoter of them. Uh, it's only going to get worse. But let's continue. Right. And Chris, you may re- I'm sure you remember, as I do, that before the scandal became public with regard to Todd Bentley, uh, it was very difficult to find any charismatic who would raise any level oh, of yeah. concern or warning about this guy, including some of the finest continuationist brothers that we've got. John Piper, for example, was critical of uh, Todd Bentley after the scandal broke. But yeah. prior to that, he was totally silent about it. And and people in that sort of continuationist, even the you know reformed camp, men who who I would generally agree with most of their theology, uh, they were reluctant or, or afraid to say anything negative about Todd Bentley. And in fact, when we wrote about it on the Pyromaniacs blog, uh, we were scolded by some of those people for being too eager to criticize. Yeah, no, I, I boasting about kicking old women in the stomach. And we're being scolded by supposedly the sane and sober continuationists uh, for being too skeptical, too cynical. And, and to me, that just underscores the danger of that kind of willing gullibility, the notion that I'm afraid to be critical because I might be blaspheming the Holy Spirit. That is dangerous. And in fact, it leads people to blaspheme the Holy Spirit because it's a blasphemy of the Holy Spirit to look at somebody like Todd Bentley and say, maybe that is God at work in him. Yeah, I completely agree with you. Those are some strong words there, Mr. Johnson. And Chris Rosebro, he completely agrees with you. There's an awful lot of silence that's going to be paid for. He's correct to say, where were these people that claim to be continuationists speaking up against the farce that is Todd Bentley? He says finally that John Piper did speak up, uh, he 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 puts John Piper under the umbrella uh, under the umbrella of our finest brothers, John Piper, the one that campaigned for Rick Warren, promoting him. John Piper, the one that does Lectio Divina with Beth Moore and Francis Chan. John Piper, the one that takes pictures with Carl Lentz at the Passion Conference. That John Piper, finest charismatic brothers. Why? Well, he's a Calvinist. He's Reformed. So apparently, we can just overlook all that other other stuff. But what about the silence? What about the silence? We shouldn't be scared to be too critical. Yet, the very same critiques that these men received from the charismatic people saying you're being too quick to judge is, are exactly the critiques that they're leveling at me. The things that Phil Johnson and, and Todd Friel and J.D. Hall have said uh, about the issue that I'm raising here, the legitimate, biblically substantiated issue that's a, that was an issue for heroes of theirs like Charles Spurgeon— uh, they're saying uh, that I'm a kook. I'm a whack job. They're basically doing exactly what Michael Brown's done when he says, oh, they're a bunch of conspiracy theorists. All right? That's what uh, J.D. Hall says. Oh, he's a sectarian minimalist. He's, uh, he's, a, he's a theological weirdo. They have to use these dismissive terms because they can't debate the issues publicly. Again, I've said I will debate any of you, all of you, simultaneously in public in front of a camera. Chris Rosebro, J.D. Hall, Phil Johnson, Todd Friel, line them up. Why won't they? They have nothing to say, that's why. 
They're hypocrites, that's why. Their own words condemn them. It's not me versus Chris Rosebro. Again, this is Chris Rosebro versus Chris Rosebro. This is Phil Johnson versus Phil Johnson. It was J.D. Hall versus J.D. Hall. I'm only holding a mirror up. It's not me. These are the facts. These are your words. You said it. Let's continue. It's just patently absurd. It's a clown show. Yeah. Now, let me let me read a quote from uh, your boss, uh, John MacArthur. Your boss, uh, John MacArthur. Your boss, your boss. It's a clown show. What might be the reason for some of this uh, double standards, this personal favoritism, this partiality and judgment that we're seeing here? Well, you just heard it. Who's Phil Johnson's boss, John MacArthur? It's his boss. That's the man that's in control of his livelihood. Who's Phil Johnson really working for? Who are any of these guys really working for? Well, if you're more loyal to the person that writes your paycheck than the one who shed his own blood for your soul, might I submit to you that you're an idolater and you're not worthy of Christ? Might I submit that to you? That's a statement that I'm sure they would agree with on the surface, and yet... Their actions betray a loyalty to something or someone other than truth, to something or someone other than Christ, whether it's John MacArthur only, whether it's a combination of things that, well, not only do I like John MacArthur, but God forbid if I said something foul against him, I'd lose half my listenership. I might not be invited to the next conference. Uh, I, would, I would lose my sphere of public influence. And that's the problem. Public influence, fame, recognition, and their check is more important to them than truth. What happened to that whole um, forsaking all to follow Christ? I read that in my Bible. Maybe it fell out of the preacher's Bible you got at the last shepherd's conference. But Jesus said very clearly, whoever does not hate father and mother and brother and sister, yes, in his own life also, he cannot be my disciple. So what are you loyal to? What are you pandering to? Let's continue. Yeah, and you know what? He argues that way all the time. I don't know what criteria he has in his head uh, to decide whether a person is a brother or not. But it seems to me that if he knows a person personally and he thinks he's a nice guy, yeah, he's going to say, I know him. He's a dear brother in Christ. Even if a guy never preaches the gospel, even if he's preaching a false gospel, Michael Brown will say, I know him personally, and I'm convinced he's a brother in Christ. He said that about Bill Johnson. He said it about, mm -hmm. what's his name, the antinomian in Singapore. Uh, <laughs> oh, oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, well, what's his name? I, The guy with the really good hair. I <laughs> yeah. Anyway, you know, the Singaporean antinomian. Yeah, yeah. Who's buds with uh, Joel Osteen and all of that. And Michael Brown has been, uh, you know, actually a a pretty decent critic for the most part. I, I think he gets into legalism, but he, he said some good things that are critical of uh, what he calls hyper grace. Yeah, some of yeah. the extreme antinomians like, what's his name? Joseph. Joseph Prince. Joseph Prince. Prince. That's his name. Yeah. Joseph Prince. It's been a while since I've done a Joseph Prince yeah, update. After having critiqued hyper grace, he takes the one guy who's probably the most extreme example of hyper grace, Joseph Prince, has a personal meeting with him and concludes that he's a dear brother too. He might, he might be, we might disagree on some stuff, but he's not going to tolerate any kind of criticism uh, that suggests that Joseph Prince is a charlatan and a fraud. Right. You mean like how Chris Rosebro and Phil Johnson won't tolerate any kind of criticism about how John MacArthur is partnering with heretic embracing fools that he ought rather be rebuking and is thereby committing the sin of Eli from 1 Samuel 3.13? You mean like that? You mean like how the Bible says in 2 John 11 not to bid them Godspeed, not to welcome them into your home? Um, lest you share in their evil deeds. You mean like how Romans sixteen seventeen says to mark and avoid those who cause divisions contrary to sound doctrine. You mean like how first, uh, I mean Ephesians five eleven says to um, expose the unfruitful works of darkness. You mean how uh, um, ev how the myriad Bible passages tell us to separate ourselves for the the idea of holiness itself is predicated upon this notion of separation from that which is evil the children of Egypt were separated from i mean of Israel were separated from Egypt 
Come out from among them and be ye separate. You mean like that? Let's continue. They're talking about personal favoritism. Michael Brown is showing favoritism to a friend. You mean like John MacArthur shows favoritism to his friend uh, Mark Dever? You mean, you mean like that? Mark Dever, the same guy that promotes Russell Moore? Russell Moore of the Southern Baptist Convention who spoke at the Vatican with Rick Warren? You mean like that? Let's go. Right. But throughout those epistles to the churches, he praises those who have fought against false gospels, false doctrines, and heresies, and he condemns those who have tolerated those things. Yeah. So, I mean, that is a very important issue. You're correct, Phil. It is a very important issue. Jesus condemns those who tolerated these things. Romans 1 says the same thing. These not only do the same, but they also approve of those who do. Approval equals condemnation. But Chris Rosebro says conference does not equal church fellowship. They don't know what they believe. Or they do, depending on who you're talking about. So Jesus was very clear that your approval, your refusal to rebuke things that need to be rebuked, will net you condemnation. Yet, Chris Rosebro uh, introduces this arbitrary uh, personal favoritism 101 standard, conference does not equal church fellowship. Except this is only applicable to John MacArthur and nobody else because Michael Brown only spoke at conferences. What's the problem? It's not a church fellowship, right, Chris? Poor exegete, horrible exegesis of Second Corinthians, or sorry, Second uh, John eleven. Horrible. Again, yet another reason Chris Rosebro should not be teaching anybody. Uh, but Chris Rosebro, the confessional ordained Lutheran, can't stand not to have his clerical collar, um, you know, denoting him as the preeminent one above all else. Right? Congratulations, Chris. Let's continue. I don't care if it was John MacArthur who got the you know the Seven Mountain Revelation. I'd reject it straight up because that's extra biblical, and that by accepting it, I am literally tacitly denying the sufficiency of Scripture. So you know, just just saying. So you know, it's just strange stuff. But uh, is there a way to figuratively, tacitly endorse something? Chris Rosebro is yet again having trouble with the word literally. Um, he uses it all the time in, in, in improper form each time. So again, while we're going to critique Michael Brown on pronunciation, let's make sure we cinch up Chris Rosebro's lack of understanding when it comes to basic words like literally. Um, but he says, I don't care if it was John MacArthur that got this Seven Mountain Revelation. Yes, you do, Chris. Yes, you do care if it's John MacArthur. We've shown that very clearly in this short amount of time. You care very much who says what. You're inconsistent. You're a hypocrite. You care very much. But let's let's continue. So well, but but typical too. Don't you think that is uh, where Michael Brown, for at least three or four years, has focused the majority of his energy? He doesn't have time to look into whether Benny Hinn's a heretic or no, whatever. No, no. But he has all the time in the world to debunk critics of charismatic extremism right we have no credibility yeah we have none whatsoever how dare you you know so again uh, michael brown he just doesn't have time to look into critiques well chris rosebro is learning well from uh, his apparent ghost mentor michael brown because chris rosebro says i don't know how to make this any clearer if you think piper and MacArthur should separate from more talk to them he doesn't know he doesn't have time to look into it he doesn't know what I'm talking about. To to comment on the last segment, when Chris Rosebro said um, he was talking about tacit endorsements, right? You can tacitly endorse something by failing to defend what you should defend or failing to condemn what you should condemn. You are affording your tacit endorsement, your silent, your endorsement without saying it, right? So... If, if some atrocity is taking place in front of me and I don't intervene, we have good Samaritan laws on the books. If you don't help somebody who's in need, you'll go to jail for it. If you just allow somebody to die, if you see a rape in progress and you do nothing, what are you doing? Well, you didn't rape them, but you're definitely in, you're tacitly endorsing it. You must not care. How could you watch and let it happen? So the, the idea of 
tacit endorsements is not a foreign concept to Chris Rosebro. It's just one that he doesn't like to apply consistently. Um, let's continue. Uh, Brown is really an expert at that, taking sort of the the literal wooden literal sense of uh, a critic's words and and trying to make it sound ridiculous when in fact the critic is making a very valid point yeah no i think i'm convinced at this point that chris rosebro has just been incessantly studying michael brown's playbook and phil johnson as well michael brown is skilled at taking people's words and and making them twisting them and making them sound absurd well let's go back to chris rosebro's statements shall we you are aware that Phil and I have spoken at several conferences together. That makes Phil a promoter of Lutheranism, right? Absurd, but he has to go there. What else does Chris say? If speaking at a conference with Piper makes J. Mac guilty of Moore's false teachings, then you speaking with me on Twitter makes you a Lutheran, twisting words and taking them to absurd conclusions, just like Michael Brown. I said to Chris, making light of such a serious issue is telling, Chris, was Spurgeon wrong here, yes or no? I then provided him with this quote from Charles Spurgeon, which says, Fellowship with known and vital error is participation in sin. As soon as I saw or thought I saw that error had become firmly established, I did not deliberate but quitted the body at once. Since then, my counsel has been, come out from among them. I have felt that no protest could be equal to that of distinct separation from known evil, that I might not stultify my testimony. I have cut myself clear from those who err from the faith and even from those who associate with them. Sword in the Trowel, 1888. Chris's response was, Hey, Phil, apparently Spurgeon requires J. Mac to separate from Piper. If he doesn't, then you are also guilty of promoting Beth Moore. So, once again, Chris Rosebro has learned well from his ghost mentor, Michael Wor uh, Brown, in how to twist words and make them say utterly absurd things that were never meant nor implied. Why? Because he can't argue biblically just like Michael Brown fails to, is incapable of or unwilling to engage in a biblically sound argument, Chris Rosebro can't or won't. In either case, he's disqualified from teaching altogether. Yet again, let's continue with Chris and Phil. But if you, if you truly love Christ and have indwelling you the Holy Spirit whom he promised to send, I don't see how you can watch all that stuff and all the false claims, false right. prophecies, demonstrably false lies and false doctrines how can you watch that and and see it be attributed to the holy spirit mm -hmm. in christ's name the spirit of christ and and sit there passively and say well i don't know but i don't want to be critical you i i just don't see how someone who truly loves christ and is indwelt by his spirit mm -hmm. can can put up with that yeah exactly uh that is exactly right. How can someone who truly loves Christ sit idly by and watch as known and vital error is firmly established in their midst? To quote Chris Rosebro, no, I don't see a problem with men embracing uh, Rick Warren, Beth Moore, Francis Chan, and Carl Lentz. I don't see a problem with MacArthur speaking with those guys. Why? Because church isn't a fellowship. I don't see how somebody that's indwelt by the Holy Spirit, who claims, claims to love Christ, who claims to be doctrinally sound and sola scriptura, could stand idly by and watch that. I don't understand if I don't have an understanding of human nature, but as I do, uh, because I am one, I know that there's an element of human nature that needs to be put to death daily, the one that, uh, that seems to rear its head um, most which is self-preservation. The call of the Christian is death to self. It's often been said, Jesus promised two things for those that want eternal life, salvation, and a cross to die on. If you want to come after me, take up your own cross and follow me daily. What are Chris and Phil not doing? They are not taking up their cross. Why? They can't say anything about this because it will affect them personally. That's where their loyalty lies. If it didn't, they would be saying something. Again, how could somebody sit and watch this error be firmly established? How could you watch John Piper do what he's doing and not openly rebuke him and, and say, hey, hey, MacArthur, 
Um, your failure to rebuke John Piper publicly on the heels of your decades-long affirmations and endorsements of him would itself be a, a refusal to submit to commands in Scripture. How could you sit by while Paul Washer has unwaveringly endorsed John Piper for years and Trip Lee and Lecrae and calls them friends? and never retracts, repudiates, or recants those endorsements, that is a failure to submit to very clear commands in Scripture to rebuke in the presence of all those continuing in sin, to purge the leaven from you because a little of it leavens the whole lump. So that's a very good point. How can anybody that claims to love Jesus and have the Holy Spirit sit by silently while error is firmly established they're loyal to someone other than Christ. You know, you know in fact, uh, I, I, this is not just with regard to the charismatic movement, but the uh, broad evangelical movement today is going to have a lot to answer for, for our, our silence with regard to false teachers, false claims, false doctrines, and all that. I, back to the letters of Christ to those churches in Revelation, uh, he will rebuke the churches of the 20th and 21st century so far yeah. for... Uh, for for just blithely tolerating so much falseness. Yeah, yeah, no, it it it's, uh, and you, and you think about this is that anybody who would aspire to the pastoral office, Scripture is so clear that uh, that we have a stricter judgment to go through, and that idle words are 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 you know are a bad thing on the day of judgment for a pastor. Yes, Chris, literally. A bad thing. Talk about blithe tolerance. Not only do these men tolerate what's going on around them, but they mock the very notion that anyone would dare to bring it up. Hey, Phil, what's next? Saying John MacArthur's guilty of, uh, of, of dancing because of uh, the six degrees of separation of Kevin Bacon? That's what these men are engaged in, and they're very right. There's going to be a lot to answer for. The silence is deafening. There is a lot to answer for. And Chris is right. Those who uh, are, are called to be teachers or those who have just put themselves in that position uh, will have a more strict judgment. Heed these warnings. They're not mine. These critiques are not mine. I'm offering a biblical critique of your inconsistencies, your personal favoritism, your gross hypocrisy in not keeping the church pure. For somebody that claims to uh, to hate all the error, right? Uh, Chris Rosebro came out of the Latter-day Reign movement and hates that, and rightfully so. I don't disagree with his critique of most of these people, if not all of them. I agree with his critiques of Stephen Furtick. I agree with his critiques of Joyce Meyer and the Word of Faith and the NAR. They're all valid. There's no disagreement there. I agree with you. Those are all horrendous heresies. These people are frauds. I'm in complete agreement. What I'm saying is you're not consistently applying these critiques. I'm not looking for something that isn't there. This is public fact. This is empirically verifiable fact. This is not debatable which I suspect is the reason none of these guys want to debate. But let's continue. You know, on the one hand, he has a category for a heretic, but it's like, okay, give me an example of one of those today. Yeah, you know, probably John MacArthur, you know. <laughs> <laughs> they, they can't even fathom the thought that John MacArthur would be in error. It's laughable. Look, it's laughable to him. That's how blind they are. It's not, it's not ignorance. It's willful blindness. They are willfully blind to the error taking place around them. Oh, probably John MacArthur. <laughs> That's crazy. Is it, is it crazy? Or is it that you're more interested in protecting your own self-interest than you are with speaking truth? For all of the discernment talk, you seem to be sorely lacking in it. Or either that where you know exactly what's going on, and you're silencing yourself. Either way, you're disqualified, Chris. Let's continue. All of it's in the name of Jesus, and by the way, Jesus warns us in the Olivet Discourse that these false teachers and false prophets are going to come to us in his name. You know, it's like, 
you, you think they're going to show up, you know, you know, wearing a, you know, a devil's union suit and have a pitchfork in their hand. Hey, I'm the, I'm the spawn of Satan. I'm here to teach you today. No, they're always going to show up as angels of light and masquerade as true prophets and, and true anointed ones. Yeah, that's, that's the point I think Michael Brown doesn't get. Uh, and in fact, his defense of even the worst charismatic charlatans typically begins with, no, I know that person, and he's a, he's a lovely man of God. He's a great Christian, a really sweet personality. So not only is it the point that Michael Brown doesn't get, it's the point that Phil Johnson and Chris Rosebro don't get. Because Chris is right. False teachers come in the name of Christ, but all deception is not so apparent. We don't need to look farther than who Jesus dealt with personally. Did Jesus condemn the Sadducees? Answer, yes. Were they liberal in their theology? Answer, yes. They did not believe in the resurrection. They did not believe in angels. Jesus condemned them. Who did Jesus spend comparatively more time critiquing? and use comparatively harsher, harsher words critiquing. The scribes and the Pharisees, significantly more conservative, significantly more correct in their doctrine. And yet Jesus says that their leaven was hypocrisy. Oh, they came in the name of the Lord. They said, we're children of Abraham. What did Jesus say? You're children of your father, the devil. Now, did the Pharisees like the uh, Sadducees? No. They didn't get along. Why? Because the Pharisees knew very well that what the Sadducees believed was erroneous. They did not agree with the liberal doctrine of the Sadducees, and that in no way vindicated them from the scathing rebukes of Christ. He said, when you make a proselyte, you make him twice as much a son of hell as yourself. So merely not believing in the Latter-day Rain movement or not believing in Word of Faith or not believing in the NAR heresies is not good enough. Even the, uh, even the Pharisees could see past the error of the Sadducees. And Jesus said, you're whitewashed tombs. So did they come in the name of God? They sure did. Did they speak a lot of truth? They sure did. So whatever Michael Brown doesn't understand, Phil and Chris don't understand either. Not all false teachers are saying ludicrous things. It's subtle. And Jesus warned of the leaven of the Pharisees, which is hypocrisy, saying and not doing. It's the heresy uh, of action or inaction. Right? It's, there is orthodoxy and there is orthopraxy. And when you fail to do what you're saying, you're a hypocrite, just like the Pharisees. Let's continue. Their end will correspond to their deeds. And, th I mean, here we learn the real nature of false teachers and false apostles is that they do everything they can to disguise themselves as true Christians, but when you can look at their doctrine and their fruit, you can't, which, by the way, those are practically synonymous concepts, that nothing is lining up, but they, they will claim that they are truly part of the truth. Their doctrine... And their fruit, he said, virtually synonymous concepts. If the fruit you're bearing is partiality and personal favoritism, we got a problem. If the fruit you're bearing is unbalanced weights and measures, it's an abomination to the Lord. If the fruit you're bearing is permitting error to take place in front of you, Eli, for Samuel chapter 3, what did God do to Eli? He judged him and his sons. All three of them died. Was Eli a priest? He sure was. He had priestly authority. They weren't just his children. They were also co-priests with him. And rather than restraining what they were doing to the fullest of his might, he confronted them in, a, in apparently soft language, even saying, why are you doing these things? But he didn't go far enough. And for that, God judged him. That ought to frighten you. Let's continue. Well, Phil, I want to thank you for your time. <laughs> I, thank you I, for having me. It's always a joy to talk to you. And uh, I listen to you and think of you more than more, far more often than we talk. But uh, 
Well, Just I, know I love you. I appreciate what you do. I'm looking forward to uh, seeing you this summer. Uh, you're, you're, uh, you, you've agreed to come to the Pirate Christian Radio Conference for our 10th year anniversary for Pirate Christian Radio. So we're, we're gonna we're gonna have to figure out what to do. You know, you're, you're gonna come to Kongsvinger, and uh, you betcha. So, but uh, looking forward to uh, having you speak. And of course, you know, considering all of the you know the importance of talking about the charismatic movement, I've actually asked you to uh, speak on that topic this August. So. And I appreciate your willingness to come out and, and do that, especially on your return trip from Finland. So, Yeah, looking forward to it. All right. Like I said, they're very close. Good buddies. Very good buddies. Um, so they show personal favoritism to one another and their other mutual friends. Um, recently released a video about Justin Peters. So we got Justin Peters, we got J.D. Hall, we got Todd Friel, we got Phil Johnson, we got Chris Rosebro. They're all in the same sphere of people. They're all, they speak at conferences together. I think most of them, gosh, if not all of them, spoke at the Judge Not Conference together. They're all friends, right? So it's no wonder that this is coming out. But I spoke to Chris back in October about this. Legitimate biblical uh, question hey how how is this happening why is this happening don't aren't you concerned about this nope he's not concerned or if he is he's not concerned enough to jeopardize his platform or his sphere of influence and again my thought is um chris is more loyal to the idea of christian celebrity than he is to christ because if he weren't he'd be saying truth without the consequence, without worry of the consequences. Charles Spurgeon once said, your job is to do right. Consequences are with God. If all of your apparent usefulness were to be destroyed through one act of obedience, you are yet to do it. Though the heavens fall, you're yet to do it. And if by one act of disobedience, it would be seen to increase your usefulness a hundredfold, you have no right to do it. Your job is to do right. Consequences are with God. So I just find it curious that uh, these men are uh, so ready to quote people like Charles Spurgeon and have so little in common with people like Charles Spurgeon. J.D. Hall will talk about today being the modern downgrade without recognizing that he's a part of that very same downgrade. Um, just like Michael Brown is blind and oblivious at least apparently, to what's taking place around him, so these men make themselves blind and oblivious for the sake of maintaining their friendships and their platform and their sphere of influence. M most of these men are just hungry for fame. And it's tragic and it's sad. And we'll finish with this brief clip highlighting what seem to be Chris's motivations. Um, go ahead and hit the subscribe button. Um, go ahead and hit the subscribe button. Hey, go ahead and hit the subscribe button below. Uh, go ahead and hit the subscribe button and ring that bell too. That'll uh, help you out. Go ahead and hit the subscribe button and go ahead and ring that bell. Go ahead and hit the subscribe button. You, yeah, go ahead and hit the subscribe button. You, the, go ahead and hit the subscribe button below. Uh, uh, then go ahead and click the uh, subscribe button below. And go, go ahead and hit the subscribe button down below. It's just patently absurd. It's a clown show. It's a clown show. It's a clown show. It's a clown show. Yeah.